there, it's Natasha, and thank you so much for joining me today. Now, as with every Christmas, pre-Christmas, I like to go through uh, everything in my house, including my craft supplies, and have a little bit of a clean out and donate some bits and pieces. And obviously, while doing a clean out, I find good things that I have just popped away. So I am shopping in my stash today and using some things that I came across. Now these are some little, I think these are maybe 3x3 three three or 4x4 four four inch sticker, so they're adhesive backed note paper, uh, music paper, and they are sort of all different vintage types here. Now I have picked out I think 4 or 5 of them, and I am going to tear them up into smaller pieces because that is the look that I want to create my background on my card today. So I really am going to shop in my stash. These are all things that I have had for a really long time. You've seen all of these supplies in lots of videos. There is one new thing that I am trying out today, and I will show you that in a little bit. But to create my background with this gorgeous music paper, and it was just too good to kind of leave sitting in my drawer and not do anything with, I had enough to create two full card backgrounds out of these little ones that I've ripped up here, and I still put back about five or six of the squares uh, for another time as well. So as I said, these are adhesive backed, so it's really easy that I just peel off the back. The adhesive is nice and strong, and I'm not worried about it coming up at all. And then once I have got those nice torn edges, and the only other thing that I am making sure that to try and do is to make sure that there are kind of those different variations in color and that color brown uh, next to each other so that it doesn't just all meld into one. I want it to really look like this was all pieced together to create my background. And just because I'm <laughs> lazy, I am using the edge pieces of the note paper to go around the edge of my card. I actually do end up cutting this down later on, but I wasn't intending to at this point. So I have just popped together lots of these little pieces. And here's where the truth comes out. So I popped away from my desk and <laughs> I had another job to do and a gorgeous little helper helped themselves uh, to adding some inks onto my first background. So the one that you're seeing on screen now is actually a different one. You'll notice that the pieces are in different places, but I used it out of the same scraps and I am going to carry on with this new little page I have here. Everything is exactly the same and I did it exactly the same way. I am going to cut this down. As I said, I didn't originally intend to, but I am going to cut it down to end up being four by five and a quarter inches. And I'm cutting a little bit off each edge just to make sure that the edges are nice and straight and I have nothing hanging over uh, from when I was putting down the note papers. Then I'm taking a little bit of Vintage Photo Distress Oxide Ink and a finger dauber, and I'm just going to darken up these edges a little bit. I'm really leaning into the kind of vintage style or antique style of the note paper. So I'm going to pop this around all of the edges. I'm not going to pop it in the middle because I don't want to cover up those little white torn edges that we can see. I think that really defines all of the little pieces of uh, note paper. And then from there, I am going to add a few little things. I was having so much fun with this card. I really had a whole lot of fun creating it. And sometimes it's fun to, when you're cleaning out your stash and finding what you have, just like this Dilutions paint here, which this one is super, super old. And when I opened it, I wasn't even sure it would be good anymore, but it is perfectly fine. I'm taking a dry paintbrush and just kind of wisping a little bit of the ink down the sides facing into the middle. Now because I used Distress Oxide inks around the outside, that vintage photo, which is a water reactive, so with this wet media, the wet paint that I'm putting over top, it is going to pick up a little bit of that color, so it won't be the perfect stark white that's in the container. It does pick up a little bit of that brown tinge and kind of becomes a nice tan color. I put a little bit too much up the top there. <laughs> I didn't like quite that much white in the middle. So I'm just taking a little damp cloth and then wiping a little bit of it off so there's not quite so much. I do not want to lose that music paper in the background. And then here's where I'm going to use this new product to me anyhow. I feel like many crafters and card makers in particular search for a really good metallic ink. Now whether that be gold or silver or any of those kind of um, metallic-y colors, I feel like I have bought them all and I'm just not impressed with the results. So I bought one from the scrapbook.com metallic range, this is the gold obviously, 
and I only wanted to try one. I'm not going to spend uh, all my money and then be disappointed again, but I am happy to try new things on the market. So this was me trying out this ink for the first time. So I'm just using a finger dauber to pop it through and I'm kind of making sure that there is a decent amount. And then when you kind of look at it straight on, it's not super metallic-y, but when you move it around, it's really beautiful and I was impressed. Now, as I said, I have bought so many of these from so many companies and I mean, other people have recommended them and that's why I've gone ahead and bought them and I've never been impressed, if I'm honest. So I don't use metallic ink in my card making. But look how beautiful that shine is when I move it around. I couldn't stop looking. So there are re-inkers for these and there are other colors in their range. I will maybe even go ahead and get the silver one and maybe the re-inker. I wasn't keen to invest in re-inkers before I knew I liked it because I honestly didn't have high hopes. But I really do like the results. So I have used this in a few more cards um, at this time of me doing the voiceover. I've already used it a few more times and I'm still really impressed with it. So... I'm going to stick with that one and I have ordered the reinkers and the silver one to see how I go. So just a little bit of information in case you too have been searching for that good metallic ink. Now here I'm adding a little bit of the Bow Bunny stencil gold paste over top with some little stars and I'm just adding it here and there just a little bit all over the place not too much because again I still want that note paper to kind of shine through and that's one thing that I like about all of these metallics when you look at it from one angle you definitely are focused on the background you can see it very clearly but then when you move the card as a recipient would when they're opening it they get to see all of that beautiful shine so you can see here when I tilt it it is absolutely stunning so I had a whole lot of fun, but now I need to kind of finish this off and turn it into a card. So I have a little bit of my burlap ribbon here. And again, my little trick <laughs> instead of having the actual twine is to just cut off the edge seam of the burlap ribbon. And then that way I can pull out all of the individual pieces of string. Now, if you have any ribbon or even, I did think a white satin ribbon would look really nice here and that would pick up the white from around the edges. So either either, I just went with burlap for this one. I put together a few strands of the string and tied a nice little neat bow and then I will cut off the edges just so that they're not quite as long. And then I kind of felt like this could be a Christmas card but it could also be a kind of happy holidays card. It could just be any card you would if you use different shapes other than or different colors if you went ahead and used um, like silver metallics or something. It could be a card used any time of year. So I had a whole lot of fun sending this. I did send it as a happy holidays card but you could definitely use it for any occasion. Then I have popped this down onto my four and a quarter by five and a half inch card base and I just used some double sided tape and I can't stop staring at all of those gorgeous, gorgeous uh, metallics. So I was really pleased with how those kind of came out and I was really, as I said, genuinely surprised by the gold metallic ink. Now from Pink Free Studios, these are the Dainty Blossoms die cuts and these are just standalone. They don't have coordinating stamps or anything and they come on a magnetic sheet which I really like already for storage but this was one of the things that I also purchased uh, at the same time as I purchased the metallic ink and for me this is a real investment piece. Having some nice long uh, foliage that's really kind of takes up more of the length of my card was what I was aiming for when I purchased these. So I often look for something that can create a really nice silhouette in either black or white or um, anything like that to create a really nice bouquet. Now I have used these on plenty of cards. I'm not sure if this will be the first one depending on which order I post these videos in but I have been using these dies and I absolutely love them. There are so many techniques that you can do with this kind of outline die cut and that's what I was searching for. So for this one in particular I am going to adhere down some vellum. Now when I am adhering down a whole piece of vellum the little trick that I have to hide the adhesive is to cover it in adhesive <laughs> because that way I don't have to hide anything. So I have a little piece of vellum here 
any double-sided tape on the back would work anything that you have even some um, double-sided tape if you have a really nice wide one you could use that but for this one I'm choosing to use the double-sided adhesive sheets the stick it ones but any would work and I have covered the whole back of this piece of vellum and just because that background is so dark and quite bold I am using a little bit of vellum just to highlight my focal point here now it does take away from the background and it did kind of hurt me to do it but as I said it is a busy background and I can still see the note paper and I can still see it through the vellum so I'm okay about that <laughs> I am adding on these die cuts just little pieces of liquid glue I'm using the Ranger multi-medium in the matte finish which is really really important when I'm adhering down little fine details like this because if anything oozes out the side I'm not going to get any shine which is really important to me I don't want people to be able to see um, glue or anything when they receive my cards so I'm going to pop this down onto the vellum and then I'm using those two little twigs. I use one front ways and one back ways and you really can't tell that I have flipped it around either. And then that way they go in different directions. I will put those down on my card and then I will add the little twine bow right on the front as well. And I'm not going to add any words or a sentiment to the front of this one because I think it speaks for itself and I had a really nice little message that I wanted to pop on the inside. Sometimes I think it's nice not to include a, you know, like a formal sentiment on the front of our card. And sometimes I think it's really appropriate. So either, either, whatever works for you. Now, this is where I think I could have gone a step too far. Let me know down in the comment section down below if you would have done this or if you would have held off. I wanted to add a little bit more bright white to the edges to bring in the white from the um, flowers that I had die cut. So I added a little bit of this light modeling paste just with a spatula around the outside to kind of bring it out a little bit more. And I must admit, after I was done, I probably would have preferred not doing this, but I liked it enough to keep it. Also let me know down in the comment section down below if you have kind of done that in card making where you add a little something and then you wish you maybe hadn't. <laughs> but it still turns out really good. I love moving this card and seeing that gold shine through. That is just really, really pretty. Uh, so I had so much fun creating this card. I really enjoy going through my stash of craft items and cleaning out and kind of refreshing my memory as to what I have so that I don't just have things lying around that are so precious and produce such good results. Uh, so I had so much fun creating this card. Let me know what you think of it and I really, really appreciate it if you would give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this card and make sure that you are subscribed to my channel. I post videos every other day. Thank you so much for joining me and I really look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks, bye.